Hi, everybody, and thank you for listening to the podcast. I'm James, that's Katie, and that makes this the first ever first episode of Cloud Control, our brand new video game podcast, Katie. How do you feel? This is so exciting to uh, refresh and restart like this. Yeah, it is really, it's like a cleansing experience, you know, and we took a week off, you know, getting ready for this, you know, put our new shoes on. <laughs> it takes a long time, you know, long time. <laughs> you know, those laces, those Velcro straps, just yeah, one at a just, time, it <laughs> takes forever. Pretty hard to figure those out, you, eh? know? <laughs> you know, but we, we've kind of collected ourselves, we're ready for a new exciting take on our show. And a lot of cool fucking stuff happened in that week we took off as well. <laughs> That's true. So we got a lot to talk about on this mm -hmm. episode. But um, I guess to let everyone know, I guess uh, for those joining us for the first time, um, this is the first episode of this show, but this is not our first podcast because uh, before this episode, our show was known as Circles and Squares. We were a PlayStation focused podcast. And um, well, let me get I don't want to get ahead of myself. We're answering the <laughs> listener mail question. <laughs> So the run of this show is going to be, of course, we're going to have a topic of the show. Today is going to be Metal Health Singer, a game we've been playing a lot of and we want to talk about because we've been enjoying the hell out of it. Um, and then for our own personal topics we're bringing up, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the new Fortnite season. And then uh, Kate has chosen graciously, because I know it's something for both of us, uh, to talk about the state of play in Nintendo Direct from a couple of weeks ago because we never got the chance on the other show. And then usually we do listener mail at the very end of the show where we you guys write in and we answer a question you guys might have for us. Um, but because it was so topical, we thought this just for this episode, uh, we would do listener mail first this time because the question was, uh, well, I'll let Kate read it as is tradition. <laughs> yeah, some things, some things don't change. Um, but yeah, we, we've got a longtime friend and, and listener, Jazz, who wrote in uh, just a simple you know, loaded question for us today. What inspired the name change and what made you want to rebrand? So I think as you kind of touched on, um, our Circles and Squares was a PlayStation focused podcast, um, but we talked about a, a wider breadth of games because, you know, we love our PlayStation vibes, but we also have, you got an Xbox, I've got a nice computer. Um, and we did a lot of gaming outside of PlayStation as well. And, you know, Nintendo Direct we're going to talk about later. And we just kind of felt like, it was a little bit limiting, I suppose. Yeah, I think it was limiting. And and then, like you said, we just started playing on a lot of other systems, you know. And, and even earlier on in the show, I think we were a little bit more committed to like, hey, these are the PS Plus games, let's play them. And then we kind of fell off of that where we'd talk about it, but wouldn't really spend a lot of time playing well, the games. Sometimes and... the month was like Tony Hawk and Rec <laughs> yeah. Fest. Yeah. And like, oh my God, like we have lives. <laughs> We're so sorry. But <laughs> well, you have Elden Ring to play, right? We have Elden Ring to play. Yeah. So so anyway, that's kind of the reason for the change. As far as the, the rebrand, like, man, anyone that's ever made a podcast or made anything would know rebranding is tough because it's like, oh my God, no, that's stupid. That's stupid. We can't go with that and so um yeah the rebrand i think just came along part and parcel with like well circles and squares obviously is pretty playstation focused and so we had to think of something else that was more generalized and then we were throwing names back and forth and kind of just came together right mm -hmm. and i think too like you know we, we i feel like we've come a long way since we first started and so some of the things that we had when we started out were we've just grown a lot since then i think just rebranding because it, it was the right time for a few other reasons as well it just kind of was a cleaner way to transition into you know some of the, the newer things we've incorporated good call yeah that's true mm -hmm. so, so that's pretty much the answer to that um like we said though the other stuff still does exist so if you are just finding our show now with the rebrand um feel free to go look back on all of our channels and everything you can listen back and enjoy all the other fun stuff we've done because mm -hmm. we've done some cool stuff we've like ranked a bunch of games we've had a bunch of debates about game uh you know what's the best games of all time all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff uh, so it's been fun. And so uh, those are all available if you wish. But um, I think that's that's everything, right? Um, the only other thing to mention, I guess, is that for those watching on YouTube is, um, you know, we have podcast and YouTube available. You'll notice that the video feed of this podcast now has like certain footage of things we're talking about. So that's pretty cool. Um, just a little bonus, though, of course, it will be the same podcast for everyone listening on audio as well. Um, okay, so let's talk about Metal Hellsinger because... We've been waiting a while to talk about this one. It's been out now for what seems like forever. I've been playing so much. Um, 
Man, where do you want to start? Because I've been loving my time. I know you played more than me. I'm, I'm what, like halfway through, would you say? You've beaten it. Yeah, I've beaten it. I, I think it took me about six hours to beat. So yeah. I think my only complaint of the game is I just wish there was more of it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a pretty good complaint to have because holy fuck did I just like indulge in this game. Like there are not very many games I think I can say that just feel as good to play as Hellsinger. Like the sound design and just the way the game controls, it's absolutely spot on. And if it hadn't have been, this game would not work. Yeah, I think I think I agree with you. That's the reason it works so well. And like maybe we can talk about it in a bit when we when we get more into it, but I feel like the game is simple for both its detriment and its benefit, you know? Like mm-hmm. I think because it's so it's, it's pretty streamlined. There's not at the end of the yeah. day when you break it down, you're not actually doing that much. And so it's easier to keep that really tight and focused and make it feel good. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, oh, it's, I find it a little bit simplistic compared to maybe (laughs) some other stuff that you could play. But um, before we talk about it too much, why don't you give an overview of what this game is, just in case people haven't played it or aren't watching uh, what's on the screen right Right. now. Right, exactly. So if you are not watching on the screen right now, basically picture Doom. Like it is one of those like fast paced hell shooters, but the interesting spin on the genre is that this game is secretly a rhythm game. It's not just a shooter. So you've got your guns, you've got, you know, a cool arsenal of weapons. But the main point is that regardless of what weapon you're using, you have to shoot on beat to the rhythm of the song. And the best thing that they did for this game is they got an absolutely kick-ass soundtrack. I think you tweeted or you said at one point, you're like, the best part of playing Metal Hellslinger is it's just my Spotify library. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, this is the greatest soundtrack of all time because it's just what I listen to on Spotify. Exactly. So, like, I don't know how this game lands for people who aren't metal fans. But if you are a metal fan, like, I'm wearing that. <laughs> I picked up my wardrobe today. Obviously, one of the big names they've got on there is um surge from system of a down my system of a down shirt from 11 years ago <laughs> when i saw them in concert um i've got on today but yeah so the the band two feathers does all the instrumentals and they're incredible but they have a bunch of guest stars for all the vocals so they've got like yeah system of a downs in there they've got soil work they've got trivium lamb of god like they've got some big names ginger is in there holy fuck i think that's cool? the level i just did yeah. actually yeah. and i had arc enemy just before arc too enemy, and like, man, yeah it's all been it's all been great and like i just i mean i would buy this just as a soundtrack yes. <laughs> and just getting to play a game along with it i think is is pretty amazing and so one of the coolest things about it and i think the what what strives, what makes you strive to want to play your best instead of just getting through the levels is the way that the music system works uh, combined mm-hmm. with the gameplay too. Because you're not just trying to to make it to the level and kill the enemies. You're actually rewarded by uh, not only by doing more damage as you hit to the you know hit to the beat of the song, but at the same time, if you hit enough enemies in a row and build up your multiplier, the music begins to come in because it's not just playing the music from the start. It's actually building in the track as you build the multiplier so when you start out you're just having like bass and maybe a few drums then the guitars start to come in mm-hmm. and by the time you get up to like the 16 multiplier and the vocals come in and they're like screaming at you and you're like shooting your <laughs> shotgun you know right at hitting guys yeah. in the face and it's like it's just sublime isn't the, it the vocals are the last thing to pop in yeah. and i don't think i ever got tired like i guess six hours isn't like you know the longest game in the world but i still want to go back like i'm going to replay it on the harder difficulties just because i cannot get over that 100 percent dopamine feeling of when the lyrics kick in (laughs) it is one of the most badass things it's like up there in gaming with like a Makir, the first Makiri counter you do in Sekiro is how I feel when the <laughs> that's, lyrics that's kick great. in. That's it, great. It feels incredible. Yeah, it does. Especially like when you're coming back from the brink of death, like you're in a boss mm-hmm. fight and you're about to die, but then you like either get your multiplier or you find one of those tokens you can pick up off the ground to like instantly mm-hmm. increase it. And you're, you're just about to die, but then you pick it up and the music all kind of swarms back up because you were down at like the lowest end before. And then it like all comes in at once. It's pretty damn cool. Um, okay, so there's a lot of different weapons in the game. I have to ask, what's your favorite weapon in the game? It, it ended up being the pistols. The pistols. The double pistols. Like, just the way that you're just perfectly on beat. It's it's quite quick, so you can hit every single one. Mm-hmm. The shotgun I really liked as well for kind of the opposite reason where you do every second beat, and that felt like a really cool rhythm. I've been on again, off again with the shotgun, but I think yeah. it is my favorite. 
I think for sure because it's just it's so strong and like for some reason skipping a beat and you get the reload every once mm-hmm. in a while it, it works out really well with like a lot of the, the yeah. music I think the the other one that's the close for me is the final weapon I don't know if you have it I don't the, think so okay oh no I just I think I just got the, it it's like the one that doesn't have to reload the birds the yeah. birds yeah 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 where you mm-hmm. have those kind of birds and they're sort of like boomerangs and they come back to you and they do damage on the way out and on the way right. in right but you can't always throw them like they have to actually be they in your have hands. to physically come back to you yeah. So I feel like I kind of get a good rhythm with those where I go like one, two, and then there's a pause and then they come back and it's like, and then another one, two. But the, what's funny is like the, the only reason I would say I like the pistols more than the final weapon is because I actually really like having to reload. <laughs> like, <laughs> it seems like kind of silly because obviously like, well, you, the, you know, the time wasted reloading is normally a bad thing, but because you also reload on beat, and it's an extra little mechanic that you have to add in to your gameplay. I found the pistols ended up being more satisfying. No, I know what you mean because mm-hmm. usually like, you know, because it's it's so rhythm focused. Like you really are like, I don't know about you, but I'm always sitting and tapping my foot oh. or like sometimes I'm like headbanging Absolutely. along. I headbang like, the whole you know, way. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do in order to, to yeah. maintain the beat. But I find like sometimes, you know, I just, I'm not a musician. Like I don't, I'm not the best beat in the world. I lose it sometimes. And mm-hmm. so I, I always find like when I lose it, I have to reload and the reload, I like, I hit it and then I'm back shooting my shotgun again, like com- perfect, perfectly fine. It's perfect. Um, I, I don't know. I want to get into how you feel about this because I, I, I feel like we both really love this game, but I feel like you like it more mm-hmm. than, than maybe I do just a little bit. And I have one concern so far okay. and I just want to put past you aside from is maybe a bit simplistic, but I, I think it's probably to the game's benefit that it's simplistic. So I'm fine mm-hmm. with that. Um, in terms of like mechanics that you're actually pulling off, like you, all you can really do is dash, jump, shoot, shoot reload, reload. Um, that's Swap that's basically it, right? Yeah. Like it's not it, it's, it's not the most complicated thing. But um, my one thing is like I wish the boss fights were a bit more fun. Like I find the levels are really cool, and and like the enemy variety. It's a fairly short game, you know. Like there's there's enough variety there where it's I think the enemy variety is fine. Like yep. they're they're fun to fight, but the bosses are like the same spirit thing every time and the mm-hmm. arenas may be a little different but it's but they're all relatively the same and the best the best strategy to beat all of them is to stand directly underneath them with a shotgun <laughs> and just blast into the sky like that's all you need to do is just dodge when you need to yeah i i agree i would say that is that is a fair complaint and i think because the game is so short and you only fight a few bosses because there's there's only like six or seven total levels um that they don't get tiresome but i agree that there definitely could have been more variety especially because the last boss really switches the formula up Mm -hmm. and so it is a good showcase to to like show the potential of what the boss fights can be um and i know you haven't played it so i won't spoil it too much yeah yeah. um but basically like you obviously fight um like this person this, right here yeah you always fight like the satan kind of like you know the big boss that's been like awaiting you the whole time um so you fight her the judge right the, the judge. judge but she's like fucking huge like she just shows up she has like a massive glow up she gets out of her chair and she's like six times your size and it's one of those boss fights where like you she's got like the the glowy areas like you should really put like a jacket on to cover those she's from up. hell they can't afford they only wear rags that's right she's that's all they have rags. is rags <laughs> but i mean it it just seems like you don't want to advertise your glowing red shoulder pads right but she does and so you got to shoot her like kind of in those places and then she does the summoning but it's a little bit different than the other boss fights and there's also like some kind of levels to the area where you kind of have to climb up a little bit higher and then she's Mm. fighting you more with her sword versus on the ground she's got some different moves so that boss fight felt a lot more like it was a few different phases you went through see that seemed that sounds way better the rest of them have been so mundane like i i i wish that they could have incorporated maybe slowly one more thing into each boss fight escalating up you know yeah, uh, I, n- I feel like I didn't have too much of a problem with the boss fights when I was playing. But when I got to that final one and it was so much more interesting, it really did kind of show the crack in how safe, I guess, the other ones were. And I think the game kind of comes across to me like it's it's quite an ambitious idea. Mm-hmm, it is. And the core idea works so well Yeah, that I think they, they really obviously were trying to get that going before everything else. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I think this game was actually 
quite a big risk because they're not a massive studio and this they had like I can't imagine how much money they spent and how awful it was in like legal procession to get all of the rights mm-hmm. to all of the singers mm-hmm. so like they, I think Two Feathers actually did an AMA on Reddit and that was what they talked about was like you know it was just like a fucking nightmare to to sign on people just because of how much like background right. legal work and they have was. no proof of concept of like hey this is why you should want to be a part of this project yeah it was basically these bands having to like take them on their word a little yeah. bit well like, i think i think from what i've read the the bands were actually pretty into it like a lot mm. of them were quite receptive it was just like you know like their their studio or their publisher or like you know whatever album rights people right. have like it's just so com- so muddied with like if they are able to sign on and how that works so I think maybe the game kind of was smaller in scale due to some of those like background issues. And then I think also like they spent a lot of money. It's kind of ambitious. I think like you were saying, like it feels phenomenal, but if that had a, any kind of disconnect with the music where it didn't feel perfect every time you hit on beat, the game would be, the game wouldn't work, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, it can't, you can't execute this kind of thing partially it has to be perfect well, it's like it's like guitar hero you know like you can imagine playing that if the, <laughs> if the notes didn't line up to the music right. you know it would be impossible exactly and this game is predicated so much on like like you couldn't play this if you didn't go to the beat you wouldn't do enough damage you would die yeah like you you have to try it's not like you can it's not optional you know it's like or um cadence of hyrule you know that other rhythm mm-hmm. zelda game like i would imagine that's the same thing like you can't really avoid the music yeah, portion exactly of it. like it is it is the whole core purpose of the yeah. game that's why you're playing and that's what you're going to be doing 100 percent of the time and so i i think they pulled it off phenomenally with how it actually ended up working and so what i'd like to see is like a dlc or maybe a sequel oh, eventually great, where they kind of they've got the framework now and they're out of that spot where they're you know like they're having to play it safe and they're able to kind of like reiterate maybe add some more mechanics um that are also on beat like more more mobility stuff could, maybe could like you imagine a, an on like, beat parry oh man <laughs> <laughs> if i had an on beat parry what was I saying? Crazy. This game could be game of the year. This game yeah. would be game <laughs> of the year. hundred percent. That's the thing too. Like DLC is so interesting for this because like you say, with all the, all the like licensing of music and whatnot, it, mm-hmm. it's a little bit more complicated than just, Hey guys, let's like, let's create some DLC levels. You know, yeah. you have to do that in addition to the, the, all the background stuff. Yeah. But I think other than that, like the game is, it really is set up well for dlc because Mm -hmm. we didn't really talk about the format of it and it does have like a through line story i don't know if you really know like if you really cared or did anything with the story i really didn't think it was anything too great it was pretty like Mm -hmm. kind of like a cliche like Mm -hmm. definitely not Mm -hmm. something we haven't heard before but i think they did a pretty good job it was fine it's got actually quite a cute ending which i won't spoil for you will like the ending it's very cute okay but anyway the the levels like well there is that story through line um you know going on between them it really is just like in the menu it's just really you go in and you're picking like it's almost like the front of a record right depending mm-hmm. which song you want to listen to and that's the level and you can see like the main the main story quest on the top and then there's a couple challenges below um we can talk about those in a second maybe but it, the way it's set up is like so easy you could just see the way they would just add some more records onto the side you could scroll over to the dlc levels you know mm-hmm. it would be perfect whether or not there was a story so i mean it I, I feel like this would be a perfect, like, games as a service platform. Just keep adding levels and stuff to yeah. this, you know? If they could ever get to that world. It's such a, like, I don't think it would ever get to that scale. But I could see easily, like, hey, you know, there's been a lot of interest. Like, this band even reached out. They wanted to do a song, mm-hmm. you know? Um, here's, like, a five-track DLC or, like, a three-track DLC. I think that's, like, well within the realm of possibility. Yeah, it would be so cool. And the other thing, too, is, like, each artist that they got did one song. But it's like, well, if you've got, if like, you know, Serge showed up and did a song, like, could he just do two more songs? Like, I'm mm-hmm, 100% mm-hmm. okay with him just being but in the soundtrack more. Do you think, though, like, the, I know I agree with you, too. <laughs> but also, wouldn't it, it would be kind of a letdown if they were like, hey, there's more DLC, but it's like the same singers. Like, I, I know maybe that's just like being really, like, spoiled in first world problems. <laughs> so maybe I don't like this take, but I'm just playing devil's advocate, you know. Like I, I think you have a perfect world where you get a bit of both. Bit of both. Yeah. I think you get a bit of both. I think you like have like one or two more artists or that are new and you can like reveal it. Kind of like it like a Smash Bros. kind of thing where it's like, oh my god, like yeah. you know, like uh, Lucario's in the game now, but it's like, oh my god, <laughs> 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 we got. Um, 
It's like the new version of Smash Bros. Like, which metal yeah, singer is coming to Metal Hell Singer? Singer. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be so awesome. It's like, oh, man, we got Slipknot. <laughs> yeah, oh, my here. God. Yeah, that'd be great. And now uh, James Hetfield from Metallica. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, oh, my so God. So I, I think you could do that forever, but I like, I don't think it's like has to be one or the other. I think you can have yeah. I think you can have your cake and you can eat it, too, with this game. Okay, so last thing is like those challenge levels I was talking mm -hmm. about. I haven't done too many compared to you, but just what do you think of those in general? Like they're they're fun, right? I had tons of fun with them. I basically, I did the first two levels consecutively. And then after that, I did the level and then all the challenges before moving on. Right. Partially because they give you actually good rewards. Yeah, it's like bonuses, little bonuses for in the regular little game. Little bonuses too. for your loadouts. Just small things that don't really change it too much, but just stuff like you might have to... You know, you get a few extra bolts before you need to reload or like your multiplier stacks slightly faster, just stuff like that. But I found them really fun and some of them were quite challenging, actually. And I felt like a few of them were actually almost like puzzles more than anything. Like the one I ended up enjoying the most is one where um, so you have a thing where if you get enemies down to a certain amount of health, you get like a prompt where you can go kind of do like a melee execution on them and they look cool like they when just you, feel super you swipe badass. that one guy down to his knees then cut his head off and it's like, right yeah. like <laughs> it is super cool but there's the challenge mode where you have to only get kills with that count getting kills just by shooting them or hitting them with weapons don't matter you can only do the executions and you have like a time limit and every time you get one the time extends a little bit more and they are often like really pressing you for time like you've got to be pretty spot on to do some of these challenges and so i had to kind of like develop a system of knowing how to get each enemy down to that threshold and so it ended up being by the time i was kind of at like the final challenge of that type because they get progressively more difficult I knew, I was like, okay, that enemy's sword, two, one sword slash done, that enemy's two shots, the pistol, then <laughs> right. done. And like, I would be like swapping my weapon to like perfectly like time out, not just like getting kills, but the right amount of damage to specifically get the executes. And like, it took a little bit of workshopping, but it was a fun puzzle to figure out at the same time. Right, yeah, and it, it, it's like something extra they can add on top of, like, for an extra challenge, too, because you can get yeah. your reflexes to be as good as you want with, like, practicing to the beat and everything like that. But the second you're doing something more precise and having to kill with a certain amount of damage and stuff, it's a whole mm -hmm. other layer to, like, complexity. Imagine doing, like, a full run-through level of that in yeah. some way, you know, it'd be pretty cool. Exactly, and so, that's, I think, what, like, a sequel or a DLC could really shine, because they've got a perfect framework, and now they can just reiterate and add on to that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so final results. This game gets what a, a, definitely gets a pass from us. I think it's oh, going to be uh, pretty. I think it's going to be doing pretty well on our list at the end of the year in terms of like this, the, it's going to be up show. there. I think I think I'll fight for it a little more than you will. Yeah, but it's, it's not going to be hard to fight for this. I don't think. I, I I'm like my feeling is it's really good, but I just don't know if it's really great. I I will yeah. hundred percent admit that I'm caught up in the hype a little bit, <laughs> but I don't care because I'm having such a good time being there. I All feel right. like I'm on vacation, you know, and it's like one day I'll have to go home and go back to work. But for now, like I'm just living the good life. Yeah, I am on vacation right now, so I am living the good yeah. life. <laughs> Dude, you got to beat it then. You got all the oh, time. Oh man, I will. I, I, this and Live Alive this weekend. Mm -hmm. buddy. I promise. I promise you all out there. Okay, so we're going to move topics here now and just quickly talk about uh, something that I didn't bring up a picture for in the background. It's our first time doing this. Like, so we're just going to look, look at more Metal Hellsinger exactly. and uh, we'll go it's from there. It's very pretty. But I just wanted to quickly talk about the new Fortnite season because now that you've played a bit of Fortnite too, you have a bit of a touchstone. Yeah, like I, have some a, of the I have a very impressive Fortnite. Did we talk record. about that on the podcast? I don't think we did. <laughs> okay, you have to tell everyone what happened on the podcast. Okay, so I came over one day, we're just hanging out. We're like, oh, you know, you were, you've were you gotten pretty big into Fortnite. You're like, let's do some doubles. I was, I was trying, that's what it was. I was trying to complete those last few challenges right. at the end of my season to get sexy Indiana that's Jones. That's right, you were unlocking sexy Indy. <laughs> Which is very important. So Indiana Jones is in the game and he comes like in his regular explorer outfit. But if you grind out that battle pass, you get like what he's like kind of got like the couple top buttons. He's got top like buttons no on. jacket and the <laughs> sleeves of his dress shirt have been ripped off. That's and then right. his top buttons are like kind of undone. His buttons are undone. I'm sure it's probably a reference to one of the movies at one point, but I don't know the reference. Yeah, and it's he's just like really gotten some, he's like avoided like seven snake traps and mm -hmm. like, you know, been mm -hmm. through a whole temple of booby traps. And like, that's how he's ended up. But yeah. whatever. It's so sexy we were playing. indeed. So we're playing. Honest. You had to unlock him. And we like duo queued up and I think I'd split never screen, played split screen. split screen. I'd never played Fortnite before. 
And I think, what, did we win three, we won three matches, matches in a in row? row. <laughs> <laughs> With the Kamehamehas. That's right. We had that one where we, like, there were two other people left, and they were kind of fighting each other. And we are like, well, we're going to wait it out and just fight the guy who was winning. But they took so long. They were both like, okay, let's Kamehameha, like, one We're going to double Kamehameha and these guys. They, like, we, like, crossed them and killed them both <laughs> at the same time. That's right. Yeah, it, it was, was awesome. Cool. It was super badass. It was, it was cool. Anyway, all that to say, the new season has now started, so there's no more Dragon Ball Z stuff. Aww, Unfortunately, it's gone. Cool. Um, but yeah, the new stuff is, is kind of interesting. So I wanted to just more or less bring this up to get your take on what you think about this. Okay. Now that you're a veteran multi-win That's player. That's right. I'm a acl highly yeah. acclaimed uh, Fortnite That's veteran. Right. <laughs> so the new season's kind of interesting. Like there's obviously map changes and some different weapons. Like they brought up, they brought back this shotgun where it, like, you know, you spin it around and load it and it, it's pretty cool. There's like a different sniper. But the big thing they've really changed is there's now like this silver goop that like covers things. It sounds kind of stupid. Okay. <laughs> Stick with me. It sounds stupid, but you when when there's a wall or an object that's been covered in this goop, you can actually just walk through it. Like it's no oh. longer a wall. It'll still, I think, block bullets, but you can just walk through it. And you can also cover yourself in the goop. If you do that, you'll slowly heal over time. It doesn't last forever. But instead of running, you also become like a little blob and you like blob along the ground <laughs> <laughs> and you can like move okay. really fast. And like because you're made of silver, you can also dash through walls. And what also is cool about it is if someone's going to run you over with a car, you can just stand still. Just and because you're along. flat, you can they'll just go right over top of you. So it's kind of cool. Um, I don't know how I feel about it yet. It feels like it's kind of making the game, like, I like playing, like, longer range and, like, sniping and stuff, so it's hard to hit these people when they're, like, <laughs> little blobs of liquid and they're floating around on the ground. But other than that, like, it's it's kind of interesting. But do, what do you think? Like, does that sound, like, fun to you or does it sound worse? I think it depends on how often you run into blobby people. You can get it indefinitely if you want. Because if you right. if you, like, find something made of the silver, you can... You can melee it, it'll drop more, and then you can just continue to cover other things in it when you're about to run out and, like, melee that to drop right. more. So you can harvest it, like, whenever you want. Right, because the thing about Fortnite that I really enjoyed was that it had a really good balance of being actually, like, quite serious, like, with a high skill ceiling, like, you could get very good at it, and there's a lot of, like, time where you'd be improving. But then it also just had, like, absolutely wild, like, stupid random shit you can do. Like, you can just go fishing for no reason and, like, just kind of do a bunch of silly stuff. And so I like that, like, the balance of those two things that they had. But the blob, I could maybe, the way you're describing it maybe seems like it, it kind of, like, breaks that balance into maybe a little bit too silly. Well, I don't know. There's a high skill ceiling with it, though, because you can move that's around true. so quick. You can, like, blob out of the ground and shotgun guys that's, from behind. Like, that's true. There's a lot you can do with it. That's true. So I, right. The there's jury's still out. It's too new. We've only played, like, one and a half times since it okay. came out. I, I guess what I mean is not that it's silly, but it just changes how the game mm -hmm. feels maybe more than I think, like, a small expansion should well it's not like, it's a new season though it's not a small expansion it's a, it's a brand new season okay. there's always something all right new. so my fortnite clearly i'm not quite <laughs> <laughs> the fortnite okay. expert i thought i was you'll catch up um yeah i guess it's very different i guess the problem with that kind of thing is like with games that evolve like that it sucks when you liked one version so much and then the game is yeah, but that's the that's different. the thing with Fortnite though is like they are, every season something different happens, something changes, and mm -hmm. it changes throughout the season too. So you just have to roll with it. If you don't like it, like I maybe just wouldn't play quite as often. Like I I probably still will just because we have like a standing week we play like night every week we play. But I mean it's not my favorite thing I guess. But you'll just wait for the next thing or still add something else and all of a sudden it'll make that fun right. because it'll pair well something together. Something that like yeah you can now be like. I don't know. Exactly. A balloon. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not. It's crazier things have happened. Yeah. It's Fortnite. Um, anyway, yeah, I don't really have much else to say, but I'm sure we'll talk about this again in the future at some point. Um, but everyone go check out Fortnite because it's not a meme, everybody. This game is really fun. Yeah, the game doesn't suck just because 12 year olds floss. Like, yeah. <laughs> Epic is actually like a super dope developer, mm -hmm. and like, I have nothing but respect for Fortnite. All right. And the floss is like, you know, it's kind of, you, I bet everyone who makes fun of floss can't floss. <laughs> you can't floss. Can you, can you floss? You just I can't, can't floss. I can't. Well, actually, I could at one point. I practiced. Yeah. I could do it. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the Nintendo Direct because that is the next thing we have to talk about here. Look at that. We have a fancy graphic for it too. Ooh. Oh my God. 
Okay, so we're just going to go through these uh, couple uh, events, the Nintendo Direct, and then the PlayStation State of Play. We're just going to pick out our favorite things or interesting things and talk about them because there was a lot. And I guess we should start with uh, Zelda finally getting just the big, you know, the big announcement at the end. Uh, getting a name. I personally think Tears of the Kingdom, as someone that's like not, I don't think either of us are really Zelda people, don't know a whole lot about the lore and all this stuff. But Tears of the Kingdom is a cool, cool name for a game, I think. And I love this like green logo. I know it's only a logo and a name, but it's like a new thing. And like, if this was a franchise I cared about, I would be hyped for that, I think. So I think it looks pretty cool. I think it looks pretty cool. I think they better do a Zelda Direct soon because they gave a release date of May and this game has been like in development hell for so long and you get just a little tease. Like I would be so mm. like jonesing for more if I was a Zelda fan. Um, but Tears of the Kingdom does sound cool and... You know what? It is actually a pretty logo. I'm on board. It is. I bet you we'll get a direct in like January. Yeah. And they'll have like, hey, learn about the game here. But I, I don't know. Like, I feel like they could just never say anything and then it would still just sell like a bajillion copies. It doesn't. I don't know, <laughs> it's Zelda, right? Um, Pikmin 4 was cool to see, especially after getting faked out from uh, <laughs> the, mobile. the mobile game. And we're like, you know, this is like the, I guess it's like the only mobile game that Nintendo really does aside, at this point aside from Mario Kart Tour. I think mm -hmm. the other ones have been like shut down or or stopped at this point or like right. I know like there was Metopia and there was like yeah. some other weird thing well, but this is kind of like Pokemon Go but it's like in-house mm -hmm. instead of like giving yeah. it to Niantic yeah but anyway Pikmin 4 I mean we didn't really see anything from it but I've never played a Pikmin game and I've always wanted to so this could be in a contention for like hey I want to play my Switch once or twice a year with something <laughs> that's exclusive for it maybe yeah. I'll get Pikmin 4 I don't know probably not because it'll be expensive and though something else but it, I don't know Pikmin seems cool right Mm -hmm. um yeah i guess the next big thing would be unless you were you had something else would be the n64 no. announcements i was gonna say the only thing i really know about pikmin is i hate playing as olimar in smash bros <laughs> <laughs> and that's not a fair critique of pikmin whatsoever um but that's about, i like playing olimar i think uh, he's fun i i i kind of i wish i was good at because he's like stupid only on one-on-ones though you know yeah. he sucks if you're in a multiplayer yeah. match <laughs> anyway um n64 um, usually we don't go back and play a lot of retro stuff, but this, this batch of N64 games has some heavy hitters in it. And I think we're going to have to have a night where we play Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Stadium 2 at the very oh least. Oh my God. I want to get really drunk and just play <laughs> Pokemon Stadium. And those mini games would be so perfect. The Mario, po oh my God, the mini games are so good. Like I want to run Rattata run for hours. <laughs> yeah. And like, what's the other one where you like harden the cocoonas yes. and like the boulders break? Yes, that one's good <laughs> or too. Or like you're running on the treadmill with, um. That's the Rattata. The, oh yeah. It's and then there's also. There's the, the Lickitung where you have to eat the sushi, say, but you don't yeah. eat the spicy one. <laughs> yeah. And there was also like, I remember in Pokemon Stadium 2, that one that was like a Hitmon top, but you're like spinning around. You're trying to knock each other out of like mm. a Beyblade Stadium, but it's Hitmon tops. Yeah. 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 And there's the very Ekans cool. ring toss. Like, yeah, man, very cool. those, like they could just release the mini games. And like, I actually don't <laughs> even want to play the main game. I just want to do the mini games. They could. But man, that, and then the first three Mario Party, like this is what the online switch pack should have been for in the first place like mario party 3 best mario party ever no came doubt about out. It. we have to play the 1v1 map where you get the <laughs> partners like that is the best mario party map of all time 100 percent agree this was like i think this was probably my favorite announcement in this whole direct was these these yeah. games and i don't know what that says about that I, like i think perfectly personally i think this was a pretty good direct in general but just for me it was not a lot of stuff that I want to play. Yeah, I think as I get older, the less I'm into JRPGs, which tend to be a large portion of the Direct. And also, like, man, this was the month of farming. Like, holy fuck. How many Everything farming had a farm. games do you need? Yeah, there was, like, a bunch. Uh, they're all at the bottom here, I think, of this article as we scroll through. Um, there's Mario Kart DLC. Of course, I have that, but I haven't really played the DLC too much. Um Resident Evil 7 and all these other cloud versions are coming. Apparently the Switch, and along with all their Nintendo stuff, just loves Resident Evil. Uh, they're all coming down. Kirby, of course, another game. Uh, and then we get into the farming stuff, so I guess there's that. It's cool to see It Takes Two coming to Switch. Yeah, I think, I think that's a really good game to come to Switch. It makes a lot of sense. Perfect. And then other than that, I don't think there's a whole lot I want to mention. Yeah. I mean, there was Mario and Rabbids. Like, I'm pretty excited to play that, but I'm not going to probably get it at launch. Um, and I'm already thinking it looks pretty good. So, mm -hmm. um, What did you think of the new Fire Emblem? Because that was the other really big... 
what did reveal. I think of the new fire? Emblem? It was a trailer. There's like I was like the red and blue hair. You could like summon like old characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting stuff, right? You know what? I'm I'm kind of out on Fire Emblem right now. I think I really liked Three Houses, and I know a lot of people probably were torn on it because if you don't like the Sim stuff, it takes away from the Fire Emblem experience. And as much as I can say like something about like Persona, like the the Sim was some of the best parts of that game. I don't think it was done as well in Fire Emblem and it's way more like, oh, look at these hot anime people that want to talk to you. And I'm just yeah. I'm just over that. So if they're going to be including a bunch of that, then I probably would care about it far less than if it was to be like a regular sort of Fire Emblem experience. But I don't know. And even beyond that, though, like I wasn't a huge fan of Birthright and Conquest. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't I didn't love those extra like mechanics where you could lower the defense of people and all that stuff. Like it was a little too complex for like what i wanted fire emblem to be i feel like i started was playing like XCOM or something mm -hmm. whereas fire emblem is like fire emblem is not easy in a lot of instances but i think it was like it wasn't because of weird complicated mechanics like that right it was about how you like yeah. organize your party and how you like deploy yeah and like the the, and like how you leveled your party up and what classes you picked and like how they're gonna match up against what else is on the enemy team you know mm -hmm. um so i don't know what, like what did you feel about it yeah i'm kind of the same boat like i enjoyed three houses when i first got it but i never finished it i ran out of steam pretty quickly and like in the first like house too like i never replayed yeah. it and that's too that's too bad because i will say like the second half of the game because i've beaten it mm -hmm. once with only one of the houses like i've meant to do other playthroughs but just never have but the second half is better than the first because the yeah. time skip happens and then you get like the units are way cooler and like yeah you know. i think i like made it like i was probably like an hour and a half off of the time skip and I just mm -hmm. kind of fell off of it but I think you're right for the exact same reason like I just wish there was less sim stuff like it's not like I'm not 100% opposed to it but it, it just feels like it doesn't feel like sim in terms of like their characters that are interacting with that with each other it feels like awkward dating sim for yeah, you to like talk to who you think is the cutest character and i just i don't want to have tea and like awkwardly look <laughs> at some anime boy like it just it's not yeah. my thing um and that 100 percent put me off and just started to feel like even the thing too where like you run around the castle and go talk to everyone and like fish and it just started to feel tedious like it was wasting my time. Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoyed that stuff to an extent. Like, it is kind of fun, but I just wish there was a way to optimize it or make it... Like, not the tea stuff, I must qualify. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed, like, running around the castle and, like, I think it adds something to the flavor of the world, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, some of those mini games, like, the fishing could be fun for the first time and, like, you know, yeah. yada yada. It's kind of cool to go and harvest your little things you can because you can use them to make things. Right. But it, it could just be automized way... Or uh, automated, automated? Automated. Way better. And yeah, I, I, like when it comes to talking to all these people, like it's not presented in a way that I want. It's way more shallow than I want. The characters are just for the most part the quite characters are stereotypical. Like, yeah, everybody like, has one trait. Caricatures. Like, that person's broody. That person's dumb but buff. Like yeah. that person's a tomboy. I'm like, oh my god, they're oh my so god. boring. All right, so now we're done bagging on fire, <laughs> but we're talking about the direct. Right, anyway. This Jesus. one, Lynn was in the trailer and she's the best fireman character ever. Oh, see, Lynn and Hector. So, right? Hector is such a game. Compare Byleth, so like good. fucking stupid. Stupid Byleth well, that's the other thing. to I can't Lynn say, and Hector. Like, come on. <laughs> I can't say the character in this in this trailer was, like, super cool to me. Either with, like, the divided hair and, like, those... I don't know. It seems kind of like... Is this just Fire Emblem Heroes? Because people have been playing that game on their phone. They know these characters now. <laughs> they need to, like, introduce them all yeah. into a real game. So they'll... Is it nostalgia bait? I don't or, know. like, old Fire Emblem was good? <laughs> it, well, if it was, it clearly didn't necessarily work on you and I. So. <laughs> um, okay, well, that's Nintendo Direct, I think, right? So let's talk about the state of play. Uh, ooh, wasn't that, that magical? Transition. That was so whoa, magic. Whoa. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it opened up, like, pretty big news. Tekken 8, like, just right off the bat. Um, I mean, not for us, I guess, we always say, really, but it looked pretty cool. It like, the graphics cool. in the fighting games. Like, Street Fighter, like, the last couple of months, and now seeing this as well, it's like, man, these games just look incredible these days. Yeah, it was a good trailer, too. Like, it almost made me consider, like, could I be a Tekken player? <laughs> Probably not. I could but... be a Tekken player for an afternoon or two. It sounds mm -hmm. kind of fun. Um, I don't know. There was a couple PSVR things shown after that. Um, one of them was Star Wars focused. Didn't really do a, a whole lot. This second one... I'm just thinking now if I can remember what it even was. It was a like um, tabletop kind of like dungeon. Like it was almost kind of set up like um, like a tabletop game and you kind of go through the dungeon and it's like 
you know, like rogues and magic right, users right, and right. kind of like almost like simulating kind of like a, right. a D&D style kind of game. And there was cards as well. Like there is a lot going on. Yeah. I mean, depend. you're right now. I can, I can remember it almost like you're picking the cards out of your hand. I think that could be cool in, in like potentially, but um, is it cool just because you have a PSVR and you're desperately looking for games <laughs> to play on it? Or is it cool because it's fun? I don't know. Maybe I'll find out because I'd like to get a PSVR too, as I keep saying. Um, after that, Hogwarts Legacy. This was an interesting trailer. This was like some PS5 exclusive DLC that was showing off, uh, you know, some fairly creepy looking haunted Hogsmeade <laughs> quest. Um, I don't know if that did anything for you specifically. This trailer kind of concerned me just in the sense of like, I, I think this game has a lot of potential and I might want to play it even if it just means I like feel the whimsy of being back in the Harry Potter universe for a couple hours because it you know, if you don't think about J.K. Rowling, it can be a very magical <laughs> exactly, place. Exactly, exactly. But in the last couple of trailers, they've shown stuff that really makes me feel like there's going to be a lot of, like, kind of almost, like, predatory stuff. Or like, like, freemium kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, there's, like, you know, like, pre-order bonus, and you get a Thestral that looks like it was, you know, printed seven years ago. <laughs> and like, looks like it's from the PS3. Yeah, and now, like, this kind of stuff is, like, it, it really is like exclusive quest. It just seems like there's going to be a lot of like add-ons, which make me a little bit concerned with how much of the game is playing the game and how much of the game is like, you know, come back in two hours so that your potion has brewed. Oh, God. But if you spend, oh. you know, five wizard bucks, it's brewed now. <laughs> oh my God. Like I, I sincerely yeah. doubt there will be stuff like that. Yeah. I don't think it would be so but... like, I think it'd be a lot more subtle than that. But I just, anytime a game is like, you know, all these like crazy pre-order bonuses and just like all this like, extra stuff, it, it makes me kind of concerned where it's like, well, it, does the game not just hold up on its own? Like, are we not going to buy it for the game? Like, why mm, do we need mm. all these weird pre-order bonuses? And like, yeah, it's interesting because yeah. those used to be like so exciting when you got a little bonus, but then they started yeah. being like, I don't know. Now they're viewed a bit differently, I guess. But I, I'm fascinated. We always say it every time. I'm just fascinated to see how that game ends up looking when it comes out, or like how it ends up doing when it comes out. Because it could be a hit, or it could just be like a turbo flop and i have no idea which it's gonna be it is yeah it's real it's gonna be one or the other too right like there's no way something as big as hogwarts lands like kind of with like a soft meh, right? yeah no sure sure um pacific drive one that stood out to me just for how strange it was and the concept like first of all i've gotta admit i thought it was a ghostbusters <laughs> game when the trailer started because the car just had those gadgets and it was kind of the right shape and i was like oh yeah. it's a misty sort of environment there could be ghosts Turns out mm -hmm. there's not, but it's just a game about driving your station wagon across the Pacific Northwest <laughs> through what looks to be just the craziest set of circumstances in the world. Um, like, like supernatural things, things yeah. raising out of the ground. I don't really know what's going on, but I'm quite fascinated by this. Yeah, this this reminded me of like kind of Death stranding me sort of territory. And like you can never get quite as weird as Kojima, but it had that kind of like weird like abnormal things are happening and you're kind of isolated and traversing this weird like dystopia earth and mm -hmm. i it's the kind of game where i feel like there's too much car in it for me to be interested <laughs> like I, there's something about like driving a car does nothing for me like right right i just think i would spend too much time in the car i won't have fun but i'm really curious to see like what this game is even about it's interesting you mentioned Death Stranding vibes because to me the game that just judging only on this trailer the game that I have the most vibes of is something like Firewatch almost. Oh, you know, like almost like weird. like a walking sim sort of mm -hmm. mystery. But because like in the trailer the guy stops at a gas station, so maybe mm. you do stop at like certain places and find some clues or something. But then the rest of it's kind of spent like in your car trying to get other where other places and like avoid all the shit that's going on. That would maybe interest me more. I don't know. Like but... that's just kind of what I took, but. It seems fascinating. And you know what else is fascinating too? Let's talk about these next two games that came because they're the two PS5 exclusive action mm -hmm. games. The first one, Stellar Blade. Uh, we were watching the trailer for this before uh, we started recording. But what an interesting looking game. What you said to me was like, <laughs> this game is either going to be absolutely perfect or like completely suck. Yeah, like it is such a weird like space cyber future like tech kind of like thing going on. Like the trailer starts out that guy and he's got like, his face but then the back of his head is taken off and he's got all these like tubes in it yeah. like it is a, and like some of the creature design in this looks phenomenal like it, it is a really cool aesthetic game 
and like the action looks like if it feels good it could be really fun but like you also have just this like stupidest looking main character <laughs> like, yeah it's pretty anime right it's like, pretty anime pretty, i don't know if she's anime, kind of well, bayonetta -y is, is yeah. sort of what she looks like i think the combat looks promising to me is the word mm -hmm. i would say just because it, it looks like there's a lot of impact like for the weapons when you swing yeah. them they're like really connecting with i think that's one of the things in games like when you don't have that that feeling of like oh you really like made contact that, with that that's like what puts me off of games like you're gonna say skyrim because that's what i was gonna say i mean yeah skyrim <laughs> is like a horrible thunder but skyrim isn't because yeah skyrim because it feels shit but there's also like no like pomp right like sure, sure. there's no attempt at like you know particle effects or anything going on with skyrim i was thinking more games like um devil may cry and bayonetta mm -hmm. and it's like i think like they they accomplish what they set out to do but that very really hack and slashy kind of combat to me like where it's more about like the speed and yeah. pulling combos as opposed to like feeling each individual hit is what puts me off and this game seems like it might kind of strike a balance where it, it makes that really fast paced still feel responsive. It looks to be about the right speed for that because the moves yeah. don't come out so insanely quick. But yeah, it's going to be hard to tell. And then, so the other one, I guess it's, I guess we'll say it's competition um, because this is the one, like, I don't know which one you think you're more interested oh. in, but I think it's this one for me. Uh, well, this is Rise, Son of Ronan. Oh no, just a serious <laughs> question. Like, other people could have different opinions. Yeah, of course. I just think like this is this yeah. game has my name written all over it. Yeah, so this is like the samurai game. Um, I mean, you're going to think Tsushima probably right away, but yeah. it's not really exactly like Tsushima. Like, it feels a lot more... Mythical. Mythical than Tsushima. Well, Tsushima gets mythical in, in like the multiplayer Legends. and the DLC. Yeah. And the DLC as well. But this is like more mythical from the start. And it's sort of looks like, again, like Souls-esque combat. But again, you're sort of, you know, it looks like it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility to have a double jump or something like that. Yeah. yeah you I, know, those kind of I would say it's more of like an action Souls, I guess. Like yeah. it's somewhere in between the two genres is what it looks like. And it looks really cool but the visual is very much like Tsushima like it is just a beautiful Japan that you get to roam around in yeah it looks it looks phenomenal and I like definitely is now is like this has come out of nowhere to be like hey we got to look forward to this because this could be good I, I feel like on that scale from like you know let's call it uh Dynasty Warriors is the worst offender of like least <laughs> yeah. least impact yeah. to this would be a fun tier list to do like ranking yes, how they feel this one. like worst feeling like uh those speed combos without the feeling of the impact dynasty warriors is like over here the top would be souls right like, right. like, like say like oh classic say, like classic, classic hardcore your souls. first dark souls the yeah. slowest heaviest one. i feel like like uh rise son of ronin appears to verge more towards the soul's edge whereas uh the other one, Stellar Blade, may be a bit more on the right. other side of the spectrum. Right. My my expectation from is like say like fifty percent is like the pure middle, like zero's Dynasty Warriors, a hundred percent is Dark Souls. Ronin looks maybe be in that like sixty, seventy, mm -hmm. and Stellar Blade looks in that kind of like forty, fifty. Right, right, maybe. right. I feel like I feel like anywhere from like I'm gonna cut it right down the middle like anywhere from forty to sixty percent I think that's where my sweet spot is mm -hmm. and I don't really love the extreme on either <laughs> end <laughs> so maybe that's voting well for me I don't know um, okay so then after that um, are there we missing was, something what did you want to talk yeah, about yeah there was well it's actually good to follow Ronan because there's one more samurai game that actually visually looks quite similar you just use the track um. But it is the the Yakuza one. Oh right, like a dragon. Yes, Asian? yes. So this apparently is a remake of a yes. PS3 game, which I did not know uh, upon watching this. But how exciting is it to get like like a dragon? And that's another thing too. Is apparently they're removing the Yakuza name from the like a dragon right. brand, and it's just going to be like a dragon Ishin now, which is a different thing. This this game looks cool. This kind of looks like Ronin, but it's like if we go back to our scale, this is on like the thirty percent. It's like a little bit further down to that yeah. kind of more like hack and slash, which I guess like Yakuza sort of. You know, well, Yakuza. Kind of, I mean, it's, it's like not a beat em up. The right? combat's not the main focus of the game in Yakuza, I guess, which is like, well, like, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just what they went for. Who knows? But it is funny that these two games kind of are coming out like simultaneously. Like obviously they're not related. Like this is a PS3 game, like you said, Res Ronin's totally new IP. But you're like a samurai who also has a gun in both of them, and they're just like kind of weirdly paralleled. There's a lot of weird things like that that happen. I feel like it's like all the farming games in, in the right. direct. It's like 
they could never have known like all those games were being developed at the same time they would have just been like <laughs> happened to be coming out and like and put in the direct <laughs> like, yeah you know but i agree this looks really fun though like as you, people know like yakuza is the shit and like you should if, if you gotta you play a yakuza could only play one of them do you think you're more into ishin or more into ronin because i'm definitely oh, on the ronin train i think i would pick ronin too just because i mean for as much as i say i love yakuza and everyone should play one if you've played a yakuza game to some extent you've kind of played Mm -hmm. all of them in a way because it's like similar humor and similar types of things going on i know that's probably blasphemous for big fans because there is like a huge through line like huge overarching story right but i just mean in terms of you're gonna take a slice and like pick one right because um, they're they're more yeah. like getting in the vibe of the game than exactly anything else. exactly so I'd, I'd probably take ronin but i mean i'd love to play um ishin at some point as well but uh yeah so I guess the last couple things, obviously we close out with Ragnarok, but before we got to see uh, the Ragnarok trailer, uh, there was a new controller announced, which I believe is one of the first, if not the first special edition PS5 controllers, I right? I think so, because we've had the base ones and then they had those other like galaxy colors. The galaxy colors, yeah. yeah. So we've got the God of War controller and we were just talking before the show and I, I think there's a chance that we both get one of these <laughs> yes. because I mean, my controller, you only have one. I only have one. One of my controllers, I luckily have two, but one of them just started to get the drift on the stick. So um, <laughs> it's pretty stupid. We were playing Fortnite actually the other night and I had to go and I had a pizza in the oven because it was like, I didn't right. want to cook something. I was playing Fortnite. So mm -hmm. I, I was like going to get it out of the oven and I was like, okay guys, I got to put my controller down. Just going to like, just guard me for like 30 seconds. So I put the controller down, go to the kitchen. When I come back, I'm like swimming in the water in Fortnite. <laughs> and my friend's like, he's like, hey, don't worry, I defended you. You were just running across the land like for like 30 <laughs> seconds in a straight line. I knew it was your drift. And I was like, I was like, thank you for saving my life. Man, that's a that's a real bro. <laughs> I know. But anyway, I got drift, so I might want to get this controller. It's really yeah. nice. Like there's the blue and then the the like wolf logos in the front. Yeah, it Super is nice. it is really beautiful. It's very simplistic. Like it's just the white and the nice blue, and then like, yeah, like the the smaller, like Atreus wolf and the bigger Kratos wolf. Actually, they're probably they're not those two. They're um Atreus like sons, and all that, and yeah they're like the small wolf and the big wolf but they they lure just like like i looked at that and i was like that'd be a cool tattoo <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. they look good that's right and then of course uh we come to the very end of the show which was the ragnarok uh big you know we've seen little snippets here and there of ragnarok but this really was like i mean i messaged you after this you didn't get to watch the state of play live but i no. just and we didn't know for sure if god of war was going to be there and i don't like to usually spoil things but i was just like oh my god god of war like when you see this it's going to be so amazing because this trailer was just like, like jaw droppingly cool. I just can't wait to play this game, you know? Yeah. Like this, this is one of the best trailers I think I've ever seen. Like it just had so much content. There was gameplay that showed off like the new shield and some like combat things and like they grapple, like a lot of new mechanic stuff. And like there was story elements. They just showed off so mm -hmm. many cool, like areas locations and too that, like, like they're under the sea yeah. they're in the snowy mountain they're in like the regular kind of kratos's forest sort of area they're like, and, like everywhere just the scale of it too like when they they rip the sky in half and there's that <laughs> massive jellyfish that flies overhead and like holy shit like this game just looks like they had no limitations whatsoever yeah and uh, you know what i think like, this is an interesting theory that I've been thinking about for a while for, like, the next time we talk about this game. But mm -hmm. they came out a while ago and they were they were talking about how this is a duology and not a trilogy. And it just made me think kind of like, wow, you know, this game really seems to be... Like, right now, if you look at, like, we're watching the trailer right here and they're fighting in space. Like, they're fighting in space, it looks like. Where are they? You know, and I'm just thinking, like, if they're only doing two, you know that probably affords them a lot more like, okay, this second game is going to go all out. Mm -hmm. Like we're going to have all of our ideas in here, you know, like it's going to be whatever ideas that might've been saved for a, a third game. We're just going to, nope, like this is it. Like we're doing this game right here, right now and everything's going to be in it. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I mean, that's a big, big shoes to fill on one hand. And like, you know, you don't want to let expectations get too high and like be disappointed. But at the same time, it's like, this is a such a proven studio with the first game and yeah. it was so amazing and the, you know they really haven't given you too much doubt i know this game was delayed but there's been so many delays across the board like across everything that it's not as worrying as maybe it would normally be mm -hmm. so i just feel like there's with so little reason to doubt this game and it's like you know it's pedigree and it's quality it just can't help but being like so excited yeah. for it i i think like 
I would have been excited. I would buy this game without it, like having seen anything just based off of the quality of God of War 2018 and mm-hmm. how invested I am in the story of Kratos and Atreus. Like they're some of the best written characters, like not only the game, like fucking cool to play, but just the story and like how invested you get in the world is worthwhile. But this trailer, like, I don't think I could be more excited for this game. Like, I never pre-order anything. I will pre-order this game and maybe buy the controller. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's saying something. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Very cool. Overall, I think just a great state of play. Like, one of the better mm-hmm. ones in recent memory, Oh, I'd absolutely. Say. I think a little biased because there were quite a few games in the, like, action RPG that are really my style mm-hmm. versus like the direct is a lot of games that are big like Octopath and Zelda and Bana and like so many things but they're just not my style of game so I think I got specifically targeted a bit here <laughs> but like it was a cool state yeah, of play. I'm with you. Yeah, so um, I guess that's going to close us out for the show today just because we uh, did listener mail at the start. But if you wanted to be part of listener mail for next time, you can always reach us at our brand new email address which is cloudcontrolpod at proton.me. That's right. It's not a Gmail. It's a Proton account. It's P-R-O-T-O-N dot M-E. Um, if you want to reach us there, send us all your questions. We love to read them. And we will get to them all eventually as we do one at the end of every show. Um, you can read us, reach us, of course, on Twitter as well at cloudcontrolpod. Um, of course, if you're already one of our subscribers, everything's switched over. You don't have to do a thing. How lucky is that? <laughs> uh, but if you're not, then feel free to follow along. We'd really appreciate it. Um, and this has been uh, the first ever episode of Cloud Control. Thank you for joining me, Kate, as mm-hmm. always. Um, we'd like to remind you all that this is the gaming podcast. It's not just good. It's good enough. <laughs> so until next time, we'll see you all in the next episode. <laughs>